Hero Quest. Deep inside another dimension, face battling barbarians and evil magic on a quest for adventure in a maze of monsters. The best part about Hero Quest is the gargoyle. And I'm afraid that's the best impression I can do of YouTuber Bardic Broadcasts. This miniature is an oldie but a goodie, and certainly my favorite miniature from the original Hero Quest game. For this guy, I've started off with a simple grey prime, and now I'm setting up three different skin tones. The first is just simply Mephiston Red, the middle color is equal parts Mornfang Brown and Mephiston Red, and finally the darkest color is equal parts Rhinox Hide and Mephiston Red. Mixing up three tones for the skin is definitely optional. If you want to use just one to keep things simple, I'd go with the Mornfang Brown mix. That's the color I'm going to start off with, and I'm using this to paint all of the skin of the gargoyle. You can see that I have the head and the wings separate, and that's because they nearly completely block parts of the miniature. For the wings, I'm only painting the center segment, since I plan to do some color blending here later. Next I'm switching to the darker color, and I'm going to be painting this into all the areas that I think would be in shadow. For the gargoyle, the most obvious spots are the entire back, since he's arching backwards, underneath the arms, and the inner thighs. Whenever I get to a large area where I've painted in shadow and it's connected to a lighter area, I'm going to go back to the middle color and wet blend the edges where the two colors meet. Next I'm switching to the pure Mephiston Red, and this color is getting used on all the upper parts of the arms, hands, and feet, as well as the abdominal muscles and the top of the calves. This color is quite thin by the way, I've mixed it half and half with Liquitex Flow Aid, which is just a mixing medium. That's the skin done, and now moving on to the armor. There's a ton of spots that are covered with a bumpy looking armor that I'm going to assume is some kind of leather. All these bumpy patches are getting a coat of Eshin Grey. I'm also using the Eshin Grey on the loincloth. Next I'm going to paint all the metal bits of the armor with a dark silver. I like to use half and half plate mail metal and a bad and black. The only part I'm not painting with this is the chest armor and the giant headpiece. Next I'm painting all the gold bits of armor. I find that pure gold colors are always a bit too harsh looking, so I'm creating two color mixes. I'm starting off by covering all the remaining armor with a mix that's equal parts shining silver, glorious gold, and dryad bark. It's clearly a gold color, but this looks a little less reflective and a bit tarnished. I'm also remembering to paint the entire headdress with this same gold color. Once all that's done, I'm now using the brighter gold color. I'm using this on all the upturned surfaces along the chest armor. I'm also using this on the upper surfaces of the knee armor and the belt buckle. I 
On the headgear, I'm going to paint the lower half of the protruding horn thingies with bright gold, and then I'm going to go back to the darker gold to smooth out the edges with some wet blending. And then finally, just adding some more of the bright gold to the top of the helmet. Next, I'm going to do a bit of shading and highlighting. These are the colors that I'll be using, and I'm starting off with Nuln Oil Gloss. This is going to be used on all the bumpy leather bits of armor. I'm going to use this on all the dark silver areas of the armor as well. Now it's safe to attach the head. I don't want to overdo it with the glue, so I'm using an old crappy brush to apply some super glue. Next I'm using some pure shining silver to do an edge highlight all around the gold areas of the armor. The last thing I'm going to do with the gold areas is use some Agrax Earthshade Gloss, but only on the knees and the belt buckle. The other areas are too flat, but the knees and the belt have a lot of definition that I want to bring out. Next up is the inside of the mouth. I'm using three different colors for this. First, the top of the mouth is completely flat and this doesn't look right, so I'm going to paint the roof of the mouth black to make it look like it goes higher than it really does. Then I'm using Cardic Flesh to paint the tongue and a gum line all around the teeth. For the teeth themselves, I'm using Screaming Skull. Next I'm going to be using Earth from Vallejo to paint the leather straps running down the back as well as the leather part of the belt. There are also some bits of leather on the back of the knee and just above the ankle that are getting some of the earth paint as well. This gargoyle has a bit of chainmail hanging from the front and the back of the belt. I'm painting this with chainmail silver. I'm also using the chainmail silver to pick out any rivets that I find on the armor, including the belt, the shoulder armor, and the leather straps on the back. So that's all the base colors on the body and only the weapons are left to do. But before that, I'm going to do a bit of shading and highlighting. I'm starting off with an equal mix of Agrax Earthshade and Carolberg Crimson. And I'm going to put this all over the skin of the gargoyle. For the inside of the mouth and the teeth, I'm using Reichland Flesh Shade. For the chainmail, I'm going back to the Nuln Oil Gloss. And finally, I'm using Agrax Earthshade on all the leather straps and the belt.
That's the shading done, so now it's time for a bit of highlighting. I'm going to start with an edge highlight on all the dark silver armor with Shining Silver by Army Painter, the same color I used for the gold on the headpiece. I'm also using this to get a few rivets that I missed. For the teeth, I'm just going with a reapplication of Screaming Skull. I'm pulling my brush downward so I can just mark out individual teeth, even though in some places it's almost flat. So for those places, I'll just be freehanding some extra teeth in there. The eyes are really oddly shaped on the inside, so there's not a lot you can do except a kind of reptilian look with them. I'm first painting the inside of the eye with Angel Green. Next I'm painting the raised slits on the inside of the eye with Moot Green. For the skin, I'm using only one color for highlights, and that's a mix of Mephiston Red and some Glaze Medium. This is going to be used on the tops of the fingers, the toes, and the top of any muscles that I want to stand out. Generally, any place that got the lightest skin tone in the beginning is going to get a layer or two of this on top of it. Next I'm painting the wings. I want the wings to fade from a red flesh color at the center to almost black at the edges. I've already painted the center with my 1 to 1 mix of Morn Fang Brown and Mephiston Red, and now I'm going to be using a 1 to 1 Abaddon Black and Mephiston Red for the middle third of each wing. For the edges of the wings, I'm using 2 to 1 Abaddon Black and Red. When my brush gets to the lighter red, I'm just blending the two colors together. And then I'm going back to the other reds just to smooth out any rough looking edges where the colors meet with a bit of blending. Now it's time to attach the wings. I'm using super glue for this, just putting a couple dabs on and then spreading it around with the handle of my brush. The last bit to paint on the miniature is the weapons. I'm starting with the whip and going with German Grey. I'm also using this to paint the pummel of the sword. I'm not using a wash on the whip, but I am going to highlight the upper surface of it by mixing in an equal amount of Celestial Grey into the German Grey. And for the inner side, I'm using some watered down Abaddon Black. I'm also using the black for the claws that are visible on the feet. Now onto the sword. These are the colors I'm using, and I'm starting off with plate mail metal for the edge all around the sword. For the inner core area of the weapon, I'm starting off with Stegodon Scale Green. Next, I'm giving the entire sword a wash of Celia Green Shade. I'm going to try to focus most of this on the underside of the hooks on the blade and use a damp brush to clear the top of the hooks. If I get too much pooling on the top surface, I'll just touch that up later with some more plate mail steel. I'm going to let that dry upside down just to make sure the shade stays on the underside of the hooks. Now I'm going to try to create a glow effect at the center of the sword. 
I'm now using Sotec Green and I'm painting the core of the blade again, but I'm leaving Stegodon Scale Green around the edges. Next I'm switching to Temple Guard Blue and I'm painting a thinner line on the inside of the Sotec Green. And finally I've mixed some white scar into the Temple Guard Blue and I'm putting a small dab of this at the center of the blade. The last thing I'm doing for the sword is just using some plate mail metal on the tips of the hooks and on the metal around the core. And the final step is the base. I'm just painting this to look like one of the tiles on the game board. So first I'm covering the entire base with Eshin Grey. Then I'm using some pure Baden Black to create square tiles roughly the same size as they are in HeroQuest. And there you have it, the Gargoyle from HeroQuest. Thank you very much to all my patrons for supporting these videos and for putting up with my crazy choices for videos. And also a special thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. If you own HeroQuest and haven't painted your minis, wipe the dust off the box and give them a go. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. I'll use my broadsword. And magic. Fire of wrath. Once you get into it, you'll never be the same. Hero Quest. Now with two new adventure packs, the legend grows.